Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Rust Admin Academy where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a very successful Rust server. If you're brand spanking new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. And always remember to turn on your notification bells. We all know that subscriptions don't mean much by themselves. If you take any value out of this video, and I know you're going to, I know some of you are going to, make sure you smash that thumbs up for me. Let's do everything we can to make the YouTube algorithm happy tonight. If you want to head over to a really good resource to get all of your questions answered, or if you just want to join a group of people that are out there to help other people build their servers up, make sure you join the Discord. Put a link right there, put a link in the video description down below. And if you guys feel like helping me, you want to help support the channel, you can check me out at patreon.com slash srtbull. As a Patreon, it comes with several perks, one of which is you get your own dedicated role in my Discord server, which makes you stand out amongst the crowd. You also get access to a Patreon-only channel, which is voice and text. And of course, you'll always get your name mentioned at the end of each one of the videos where you are an existing Patreon. Okay, that's all the business stuff out of the way. Let's get on to this video. So here's the thing. A couple of months ago, I did a video on GUI Shop. I did a video on the Human NPC plugin. And I told you at that time that you're actually able to make them work together, which means you could take an NPC that you created, a human NPC, and turn him into a shop so that when you go up and you interact with this NPC, it brings up the GUI shop that you're used to seeing. And immediately, as soon as I went to go try and do that, I ran into problems. I was no longer able to link a GUI shop to a human NPC. So I was like, eh. What do I do? And I kind of just didn't say anything because I knew I was going to figure out a solution for it eventually. It just took me till now to figure out what the solution is. And the super frustrating part about this is I actually submitted support tickets for this plugin to the developer to find out why we were no longer able to link a GUI shop to a human NPC. And I got no responses. And after I started doing some research on it, I found that many, 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 many other people were asking the exact same question and again, getting no responses. But now, knowing what I know today, now I understand why the developer of the plugin never responded to any one of our emails. It's because the solution was right in front of us the whole time. Okay, so here's where we're at. So normally you could go into your, after you have your shop all set up and everything like that. If you haven't seen that tutorial yet, make sure you click on the card in the top right head corner right now to take you to the video where I actually show you how to set up a GUI shop, which obviously puts a GUI up on your screen without actually having to go to an NPC. You just type slash shop and it'll bring up your GUI. But now what I've done is I've gone through and I've broken out. Okay, so by default, it's set up that it has 13 categories. There's like food, resources, guns, tools, et cetera, et cetera. So 13 different categories available in that shop GUI. So what I did is I broke each category out. I created an NPC for each one, which that as well, you're gonna to wanna to watch that tutorial if you haven't already. So I'll put a link to that in the top right hand corner right now. That is the human NPC plugin, which allows you to create these NPCs that you see on my screen right now. So I have created a, a commands guy, clothing guy, groceries guy, which is food and components, etc., etc. So you can see I've broken out all of the different categories into an individual NPC. So just to show you what happened when you interact with one of these NPCs, I'll just do that. So now when I interact with the NPC called clothing guy, it brings up the clothing shop, which of course that's what you would expect to see. So now one of the problems with this setup, and I can't seem to find a fix for it just yet, but I'm gonna keep working on it until I figure this out, is all of these categories are still all the way across the top of the screen. However, we are looking at the clothing guy, we are seeing the clothing shop that's available from this NPC, but what happens if we try to click on one of the other categories in here? Let's say, let's click on medical. It says in the chat, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, you should be able to. It says this shop does not seem to exist. So if you're on this NPC, and you try to get into any of these other categories, it just keeps saying the shop doesn't seem to exist, which is great. It means if you spread these NPCs all over the place, it's not like it's a loophole where somebody can access all of the different categories just by funding one NPC, which is great. So, I mean, like I can go through and I can do this with each one of these. So this is the food guy. This is the components guy. You can see he's trying to sell me components. This is the gun guy. Again, we can buy weapons off of this guy. Construction guy. This is all construction resources, your gates, your walls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, items guy, beds, bags, boater bags, resource guy. So you got wood, stone metal tools guy 
resource collection tools. We've got a medical officer here. We can buy all of these meds from him. And of course we have an ammo guy. So the one that I left to do so that I could do it on this actual video is the miscellaneous guy. So by default, there is no miscellaneous category. I had to actually create a category called miscellaneous and now I'm going to attach this NPC to it. And this is super simple. I cannot believe it took me this long to find this answer. It's it blows my mind that it took me this long. Anyways, it's super easy. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go up to this NPC and we're gonna type NPC underscore edit. And that's simply so that we can get this number right here, this 7840654304. Now this is gonna be different for you because each NPC that you create is going to have its own identifying number. This just happens to be the number that this NPC generated for himself when I created it. So now what do we do with that number? Well, this is super simple. So we head over to our GUI shop config file, and I'm sure anybody that has been using the GUI shop is familiar with this document right here. It's very long, it's very extensive. There's a lot of pricing and adjustments and stuff like that that need to be done in this file. So I'm sure if you have a GUI shop, you'll already be familiar with this config file. If you're not familiar with the GUI shop, make sure you check on the video in the top right hand corner so that you can familiarize yourself with what this document is gonna look like. It can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but if you've worked with it for a little bit, you're gonna feel fairly comfortable with this. So what we wanna do is we wanna scroll down to the category called miscellaneous, or in this case, it's just MISC. And what we wanna do is we wanna take this NPC ID number, the 7840654304, and we wanna transfer that into our shop GUI config. And we're gonna do it right here. The first title of the category that you see in this section. So in this case, it's miscellaneous. And, and in this shop is available to buy the spawn the Bradley. These are just random commands that I put in here. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just examples. So we're going to put that number right there. And if you want to change how the name is going to appear on screen. So as you can see here, if I go to the ammo guy where it says ammo guy right here at the very top, right above these categories, we can actually control that. That's what this second miscellaneous is right here. So let's just change this to miscellaneous guy. And I'm actually going to change a couple of things here. So I'm just going to grab a couple of items out of a different shop NPC and take that into our miscellaneous guy as well. Okay, so now we have a couple of extra items in there for our NPC shop to actually use. We've got our NPC ID in there. So we've got everything set up in here. And when we actually interact with this NPC, it's going to say miscellaneous guy above his head, above categories that we saw earlier. So let's just save that document, go back into our server console and let's reload GUI shop. Okay, good, so we didn't get any errors there. I'm actually kind of happy to see that. Now let's go see what happens when we interact with this NPC. So here we are, we're at miscellaneous guy and boom, lo and behold, there we go. Now we have those burlap trousers, the beanie hat, the boonie hat that I added in there, as well as, is there anything on the next page? No, there isn't. Plus those random commands that I had in there from a previous tutorial, whatever, it doesn't matter. But we know that it's working and that is the hugest part. So can we click on miscellaneous up here? No, we can't. Can we click on anything? It appears that I was able to click on traps. Okay, but I'm not able to use slash shop, which is great. So let me just go ahead real quick. I'm just gonna add one more NPC into this fray and I'm gonna add the traps shop to that NPC. Okay, so what did I do there? I quickly added a new NPC. I quickly threw its kit on it so that it looks like the rest of them. I changed its name to Trap Guy, and now I've also grabbed its NPC ID number. I can now transfer that NPC ID number into my GUI shop config file, which is right here for the trap section. I can change this name to Trap Guy, and now I can say reload the GUI shop, no errors, perfect. And now I can go back into game. I can click on the Trap Guy, Boom, there's our traps. Here's our miscellaneous guy and all of our NPCs are working the way that they should. All right, so there we have it. That's how you attach the GUI shop plugin to the human NPC plugin and make it so that when you interact with a human NPC, it brings up the shop as opposed to being able to type slash shop in chat. So now obviously in a real life application, you wouldn't have all 
13, I think it's 14 NPCs all in a row, or maybe you would, maybe you want to have them at your, maybe you built a village or, or something like that. And maybe you do want to have these all in the same place, but a lot of people would randomly place these NPCs all over the map so that if somebody were looking to buy a specific item, they would actually have to search out this NPC before they were able to buy it. I'm so incredibly happy that I was able to finally figure out what I was missing. And I don't understand. Literally, the answer was right in front of my face the whole time. I don't know why I made it so complicated for myself. I'm sure it was frustrating for the people that have actually been waiting for this answer and they've been waiting a long time. So I'm finally able to come through with that answer. I hope this helped. If it helps you or you like this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up for me. We all know that it makes the YouTube algorithm really happy, which makes me really happy. So I super appreciate every single like and every single comment. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you do become a Patreon that helps support this channel at patreon.com slash srtbull, I will of course display your name at the end of each one of my videos, expressing my gratitude for the fact that you took your hard earned money and you wanted to send it in my direction so that I could bring you higher and higher quality content every week. I super appreciate every single name that's on this list. My latest one was wow i've actually been in conversation with him a little bit he's a super nice guy another newcomer to the team is loc or i think he goes by Locke. he actually has a longer name but he we discussed it and we decided that we were just going to call him lock anyways huge shout out to all of my patreons i super appreciate all the support okay that's it for this video if you haven't already done so make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notification bells and of course like always throw me a huge thumbs up if you like this video at all if you didn't like the video Feel free to give me a thumbs down, but leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what I can do better so that I can earn your thumbs up because that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. If you want to check out some other videos from this exact same playlist, be sure to click on the boxes on the right hand side of the screen right now. Okay, that's it for me. I'll see you guys next Friday.